Hey, how you doing there? Greetings and salutations. It's almost 2023. Oh boy, I'm so looking forward to it. That was pure sarcasm. Somebody wanted me to make an alligator wallet. Um, <laughs> my cost on the alligator portion of an alligator wallet is about $110, my cost. And of course, there's a lot of labor in building it. I was like, yeah, I can make you that alligator wallet in that color. And uh, <laughs> hey, a guy emailed me back. He said, yeah, I want to pay you in stable coin. What's your, uh, what's your, uh, you know, your crypto wallet address? <laughs> I told him I'd make him um, <clears throat> an imaginary wallet in exchange for the imaginary money. Yeah. <laughs> This is a fair trade, imaginary wallet for imaginary money. <laughs> I could take a picture of a wallet and then make an NFC out of it, you know, an NFT, right? And then I could like send him a picture of it and that would be about the same. I'm oh, sorry, I just think that's really funny. Yeah, I'm gonna work really hard on a wallet and ship it off. And I've already got like 130 bucks in it and you're gonna pay for it with imaginary money. Okay, stable coin, I think it was. I think I never heard of stable coin before. Yeah, I wonder how stable stable coin is. <clears throat> One of the questions that keeps coming up in live stream is the discussion of space and time. <clears throat> I'll remind you very importantly, and most people people keep quoting Tesla, which is wonderful. They keep quoting the same stuff over and over again about old uh, Nikola Tesla. What the one thing that they ignore is the fact that. The closest Tesla ever comes to foaming at the mouth like a mad dog is railing against Einstein and relativity, but very specifically, the aspect of relativity is the reification of space and time having properties and acting upon things as if space and time were something. And all of this stuff of Einstein and relativity was adopted into our science fiction videos, Star Trek, Star Wars, all that stuff, garbage. And uh, it's been uh, mashed into our brains that, you know, we're going to bend space-time, Captain, and we're going to create a wormhole and travel to the uh, Talaxian galaxy. <laughs> it's completely ridiculous and uh, completely an absurdity. Is the universe holographic? You say a broken clock is right twice a day. One of the things that the New Age movement, which I have no connection to and no love for, um, was accurate in stating, and you know, people that have been vociferously talking about it for a long time. However, others, intelligent-minded people, have been saying this for ages and ages, including the ancient Greeks, the Egyptians, and the Indians, is uh, that the universe is a mirage. I'd like to actually get to the metaphysics and science behind that. Unfortunately, is the case that human beings reify things that don't actually exist, like space, time, shadow, waves, emptiness, chaos. There are about nine primary things. So there's a lot of them, but nine primary things that human beings think exist that don't actually exist. Um, to make space really simple, if you want to keep things su super simple, and I'm going to go deeper, is that space is no different than a shadow. Now, a shadow has attributes, but no properties. If you stand in a shadow, you know, you feel colder than if you're standing in the light, but a shadow is not a thing. It has no principality. Shadow is an absence of light, yet a shadow, of course, is a noun in the dictionary. So too is space. Tesla railed against the idea that space had properties, that you could bend space. But what happens is it's a necessitative outpouring of the denial of the ether. And I don't care what anybody thinks about the ether one way or another. Now, Einstein himself actually talked about the ether early in his uh, age, uh, and people quote Einstein. That ether quote from Einstein, and I'm quite familiar with it, but he later, when he developed his uh, radical idea of uh, relativity, he rejected it and he replaced it for something else. Because if you take out the ether, which is completely impossible, there's only ever been two foundations of uh, cosmic mechanics. One's been built upon the ether. The other one's been built upon uh, uh, bumping particles, humorously as I call it, the cult of bumping particles, specifically relativity. And this idea that uh, space and time is a thing in and of itself, that you could bend space and time, this is completely impossible. And actually people will try to support uh, Einstein by talking about uh, the curvature of light during an eclipse, as was observed. But light is a coaxial energy circuit. It actually bending in relationship to the enormous gravity of the sun 
is explainable by simple Maxwellian uh, field equations. And Dr. Oleg Dijefeminko himself pointed this out. He was an ardent detractor of relativity. He had two PhDs, a very, very brilliant person. Um, but space is not a, a thing at all. Space is no different than a shadow. Space is zero. The ancient Greeks and Indians did not consider zero to be a number. And exactly like zero and space, they're basically a box. You know, you put a one, you got one one thing. That's not too much, right? You put a bunch of zeros behind it, which are not numbers, then you have a whole lot of that one thing, a million, a billion, a trillion. So zero is like a box or a volume. This is very accurate because, of course, space, and I'll get to it in a second, has everything to do with magnetism. When this is present, that is present. When magnetism is present, something else is present. And what is present is space. The universe actually is holographic. Specifically, however, it follows the Poincaré disk model of projective geometry. If you want to know who actually Einstein stole most of his stuff from, everything you think Einstein was smart and intelligent for, in my opinion, in fact, there have been many books written about this, was stolen from a brilliant man. And a lot of his books are free on archive.org. His name is Henri Poincaré, P-O-I-N-C-A-R-E. Look him up on archive.org. So uh, space and zero have a whole lot in common. Zero is a box, and space is a box. It's a volume to hold something. You have a box, you can put a bunch of stuff in it, right? But the box is not something. I mean, technically a box is, but a box is something you put things in. You know, it gives you a space and a volume to put things in. It's like, I could fit X number of things in this box. Yeah. Same is true of space, same is true of zero, which is not a number. Space is a, excuse me, a zero is a placeholder, exactly like space is a holder for possibilities because zero is the number. Zero is not a number. Zero is to number as possibility, i.e. inertia or counter space, i.e. Uh, dielectricity pure potential is to actuality. So zero is the number as possibility is uh, to uh, actuality. And of course, what is uh, actual is always a manifest of uh, magnitude and born of time and space, because when you have mass and magnitude, you actually have time, which of course also, too, does not exist. One of the ten primary things that don't exist, the two primary ones being space and time, the other great one the scientists love to talk about is a wave. There's no such thing as a wave either. A wave is not what something is at all, rather what something does. There's no such thing as a wave. A wave of what? You're talking about a perturbation modality of something. You've got the calm waters, and then you have the waves of the water. So it's a perturbation of something. It has a cyclic rate, a frequency, a wavelength, but there's no such thing as a wave. No one's ever seen happiness or sadness. No one ever has, unless they're insane. Happiness or sadness. I saw happiness yesterday. Now, who did you see that was happy? No, I saw happiness. No, you know, you're crazy. Who did you see that was happy? No, no, no. I saw happiness. What? Speak English. What drug are you taking? It doesn't exist. It's a wave of something. Happiness or sadness of something. And humans are unfortunately intellectually a little bit too un un uh, evolved yet to uh, get past these uh, concept reifications of these ten primary things that don't actually exist. So getting back on to time and space, time of course too doesn't exist as a measure of masses and magnitudes and the relational convergences and divergences relational to both as far as the expression of that modality, i.e. centrifugal divergence, the mass and magnitudes that exist within uh, the actuality of uh, or space uh, creates a holder or a box for something to manifest. So the space is the negative image of uh, pure potential or inertia. Einstein never defined time, and I, I dare you to find a quote where he actually ever did. Space and time, of course, are the mirage of inertia. Uh, time is an arbitrary construct of the empirical uh, beings used to quantify the conceptual changes seen in the flux and force of motion and related to masses and magnitudes. Ultimately, all this gets back to magnetism. When this is present, that is present. When magnitude is present, then you actually have space. Space is the after effect of a divergent, um, and the loss of energy or inertia, the three-dimensional force vector. And space is the volume. And of course, a, tor a balloon is not shaped like a torus. A balloon is kind of an oblong shape. You know, there are spherical balloons. You can kind of like stick your finger in either side of a balloon and create a torus. <clears throat> and of course, inside that balloon is air that you blew into the balloon. So 
if we can imagine a balloon with nothing inside of it, not not a thing, but literally nothing, i.e. a vacuum or a void, what is the work done by the loss of energy inertia? The three-dimensional force vector of centrifugal, di centrifugal divergence, i.e. the toroidal geometry of the after effect of the expanding torus that is magnetic field, yes, that volume is space, no different than a shadow. An absence of pure potential, the work done creates something when this is present, i.e. magnetism, which is the three-dimensional force vector, and full three-dimensional extrapolation is, of course, a torus. But the volume, not that a torus is a balloon, you know, balloon with, you know, two pokes on either end, and of course, by the way, a vortex is half of a torus. Everybody's fascinated by a vortex. You want to explain a, uh, a vortex really easily to a child? First, you need to tell them what a torus is. They say, well, child, everybody talks about a, a vortex, but there's not a person on Earth that can tell you what a vortex is in simple. And a vortex is just whoosh, half of a torus. Anytime somebody sees a vortex, you're looking at half of a torus. So space is the ether rarefaction. Space is a shadow. Shadow is the chaos or chasm, or in the Greek word chaos, left in the wake of the uh, release of energy or inertia, i.e. the after effect of a divergent magnetic field the volume of the work that is done. So what is the effort, resultant uh, effort and work of this inertia? Which of course, any work or effort done by inertia is the release of some of what inertia is. Pure potential, pure rest, no Cartesian mass or magnitude. It has no Cartesian value. It has no XYZ coordinate. It has no mass or magnitude at all. This is where human beings get really confused by energy. They think energy when they see the release of energy, that's not energy at all, that's the impotency of energy. So space is for things to exist. The magnetic torus is not a thing in itself, rather the space volume generated by the loss of energy or inertia, i.e. magnetism, which is the extrinsic side of dielectricity itself, just as you could say ice is a attributional state of water, right? You have ice and water. Everybody knows what ice and water are, and we think of them as different things. We ultimately know ice is water, but human beings don't ultimately understand there's no more distinction between ice and water than there is between dielectricity and magnetism. But since magnetism is a modality of inertia, of dielectricity, what then is the distinction between the two? What's the distinction between ice and water? Temperature, right? When this is present, that is present. When the loss of energy or inertia is manifest to uh, bring forth that which we call magnetism, then we have something. The resultant effect of that volume of the torus of magnetism, which is the geometry of magnetism, is itself space. A literal shadow of pure potential. A shadow of eternity, if you will. In a metaphysical parlance it would be accurate, but it is also, too, scientifically accurate. I will remind you once again, as I stated at the beginning of this video, the only time Nikola Tesla nearly foams at the mouth is the idea by relativity and Einstein that space has properties, that you could shape it or bend it or that it act upon other things, and that's completely incorrect. People will bring up GPS uh, satellite correction, but that has to do with something else called electromagnetic retardation. This is a specific effect of the EM field given a temporal vector that uh, time will change and then GPS satellite correction and the speed of the GPS satellites have to be given uh, correction data in the transmission to account for the speed of the satellites, but that has nothing to do with support of relativity, nor does the bending of light around the sun during an eclipse as was observed and accurately uh, um, taken account for that the light bent. Well, the sun bent uh, space and time. No. Light is just an energy circuit that bent towards the sun. Light did bend towards the sun, but this has nothing to do with the bending space and time. It's completely ridiculous. So, a shadow is the chasm or chaos left in the wake of matter, or specifically, space is the after effect of the divergent magnetic field resultant to the effect of that three-dimensional force vector in full extrapolation of which we call the torus of magnetism. So neither space nor time actually exist. Every ancient culture said that time is the number four. Yep, I bet. Long video to talk about all the cultures. They all said the same thing. Uh, I think in Chinese and Japanese, uh, four is always associated with death. 
uh, like a lot of apartment complexes or whatever, they'll leave out uh, floor number four, I think. Um, like you go one, two, then it'll just skip over to five. <laughs> because anything that partakes of time partakes of death. Um, but time doesn't exist. The five, first five digits of the Fibonacci sequence are one, one, two, three, five. The only number missing therein is four. Four has always been since ancient, ancient days, ancient Babylon, the Pythagoreans, the Egyptians, the Greeks, on and on and on. And the number for time. Time does not exist at all. Time is a measure human beings have ascribed to masses and magnitude and their passing and the measure thereof. Space is more real, but still wholly unreal because it is the volume inside the torus of the after effect of a divergent magnetic field, i.e. the volume of the torus itself. Space has no properties. We swim in a sea of masses and magnitudes as, as existential beings, but this holographic universe where dimensionality is given to things, i.e. masses and magnitudes. The one thing the scientists got right is they'll tell you, every atom is 99.9999999% empty space. That's not true. It's actually a, a magnetodielectric dynamo. Imagine a super huge sphere with a tiny uh, set of part, depending on which atom it is, tiny set of particles at the center. Most of it is nothing. Not nothing, actually. It is a magnetoelectric dynamo, so that empty volume of, the, of uh, every atom measured in picometers is a magnetodielectric field, because that's all an atom is, is super high energy light. And it is specifically a spherical frequency. I had people attacking me recently. I mean, it's spherical frequency, that's self contrary No, it's just people don't understand what a spherical frequency is. It actually takes a while to explain. The concept is extremely simple, but uh, that's uh, where the dielectric and the magnetic catches up to itself at extremely high frequency. Frequency essentially vanishes and you have a spherical frequency. And this extremely high frequency, way above that of gamma radiation, which I recently discovered the equation for, is what we have as fundamental matter, i.e. hydrogen. And of course, all atoms are compounds and complexities of hydrogen. Um, so space, or, space is uh, ether rarefaction or shadow of eternity, shadow in metaphysical parlance, but uh, it's a negative uh, image of uh, pure potential. It's the chaos or chasm in the wake of matter of the divergent magnetic field. So I hope I made this kind of simple and straightforward. That was my whole intent. But as far as the absolute's concerned, there's no such thing as space or time. Time is only a measure and space is pure impotency. Space is literally, almost literally, not entirely, no different uh, than its cousin, uh, a shadow. We all know what a shadow is. We think a shadow is a thing. It has attributes. You stand in a shadow, you feel colder than in the light, obviously so. But shadow is not a thing at all. Shadow is an absence of something. Space is the absence of potential or inertia, i.e. the volume of the torus of the effect of the loss of energy or inertia that we call magnetism, which has its geometry as the torus. People talk, and I've talked endlessly, about the torus and the geometry of magnetism. Okay. But what's the volume of the torus of the magnetic field of magnetism? And that answer is, of course, space. Unlike the balloon where you blow your breath in, you have breath inside of a balloon. You know, there's nothing inside there. Not, not a thing. It is a placeholder just like zero is too. Zero is not a number. It's a placeholder. It's a box. And that's highly accurate. It's a space or a volume that you put things in. Pretty accurate. So I hope I made this simple. If you ever want to contact me, my email's below in the description. For some reason, a lot of people never see the description below YouTube videos, but it's right there below. Thank you so much for watching. Happy New Year to you and your family.